We're the organizers of the Art of Planetary Science. My name is Jamie Malaro. I'm Hannah Tanquery. I'm James Keane. And I'm Sarah Peacock. And we think that space is beautiful, but let's see what other people have to say about it. I feel that um, the study of space science is important because it really helps you wrap your head around the idea of just size. And it's with this comprehension that comes the realization that we're all tiny and that we live on a very delicate planet. So through space study, you begin to realize that life is actually quite rare and it gives you better appreciation for what we have up here on Earth. By understanding uh, space and planets, it tells us about our position in the universe and teaches us not to be so egotistical and, you know, makes us realize we're not the uh, most important things in, in this universe. Uh, well, I think the study of space is important because when people go into space, they'll know what to expect, so they won't be that surprised. And it's also really cool to know what things are in space and how they look just because we've always had such a huge fascination with space and the cosmos as a culture. I mean, even, you know, back what we know of ancient civilizations, they would track the moon and the sun and they tried to look to the cosmos because they thought, you know, that was where their gods lay. And we still kind of have, I think, that fascination with it, even as we've learned more about it, you know. And I think the more we learn, the more we realize how much we don't know. And it's just really cool, I think. It's one of the fields where it's really present how much there is to learn and how much we don't know. And just the vastness of it all is really cool. That the study of space is important because it decenters us from that false perspective that we have, that we are the center of the universe. And many people throughout history had that view because most of the major religions, mythologies and everything are on that very slim human scale. But the universe is huge and it's also minute. So we're operating as if everything out there is a prop to our little human drama. But the study of space science decenters your mind from that. For the continuation of the human race, this solar system is not going to be able to hold us at our rate of expansion, so in order for us to survive, we are going to have to go out and see what, where we can repopulate the Earth. Well, space science is very important because we have incredible technological spin-offs uh, from our investment in space. I look at uh, our investment in space as an alternative to investing in war and I think we have a lot more technological progress by investing in space. Space science is really the study of everything in the universe to me. It doesn't limit us to the moon or, or Mars, but really it's you know, going out to the universe and finding out what's out there. And uh, you know, it's fun to run around on planet Earth and learn everything we can here, but there's so many other things out there, that most of which we haven't even heard of yet. We're only given a certain amount of material that we can actually physically stand on. We're on this small planet and to learn as much as we can about Earth and beyond uh, really advances us totally and, and enables us to be uh, a, a better community. I think that when we can combine many sciences together as planetary science does, um, we're able to, to really take that to you know, beyond just what is happening here on Earth. You know, we're able to extend our knowledge uh, much further and, you know, apply what we know in this small uh, area in the galaxy, you know, to, to greater areas. And, and it's going to only benefit us uh, um, as we get more advanced. So I think it's important, probably for a number of reasons, but, you know, mostly because we're, we're so involved. We're, we're, we're stuck on the small rock. Uh, I believe that it's important for humans to become uh, multi world species in order to survive. I think if uh, we don't, either pandemics or asteroids or atomic bombs or something will cause us to uh, become extinguished. So uh, it's very important, I think, to um, get out into space. And I say multi-world instead of multi-planet, because multi-planet's part of that. 
But I think uh, besides becoming a multi-planet species, uh, the orbital spaces are very important too. So uh, re revolving habitats in orbital spaces around the Earth, around Mars, uh, I think that's important also. The study of space science is extremely important because man has an urge or a need to explore and to explore the unknown of which we know very little about. So if we don't study it, we're kind of trapped on Earth and we remain ignorant instead of enlightening ourselves in terms of our knowledge. Well, I guess my favourite fact about space is that um, Jupiter's moon Europa has more water than the, uh, all the water on Earth, but yet Earth is teeming with life, so it would be, it'd be really interesting to, to know what's beneath the surface of Europa. That it goes on forever, that it has no, no limits. When you start thinking about it, it poses questions that you really can't answer, that the human mind can't even fathom. What contains the universe? What is, there, what is beyond it? Time, what is time? I, I like to think of how tiny our planet is and our little piece of the universe is. And I think of how much stuff is out there and how many really cool things, this sort of goes back to the first question too, <laughs> you know, how many really cool things there are out there to be found whenever we get there, you know. Um, you know even in our own solar system, uh, Mars has a canyon system that is makes our Grand Canyon look like a little crack in your sidewalk. Um, and uh, are there other Grand Canyons that would make our planet look small, for example, on, on all the planets that are out there? Uh, you know, is there life out there? Almost certainly. Is there any intelligent life? I mean, we haven't found any on Earth yet, so, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it'll be a... <laughs> I don't know if we'll be able to recognize it. It might they might step on us like we step on ants, you know, walking down the street, so. <laughs> uh, I like to think of all the stars and planets out there as places I could go visit someday. So, uh, one of the things that bothers me is this infighting, this silo thinking between these different groups, when really, and it, basically they're fighting over what they believe are scarce resources. So I think that um, if they realize that there are infinite resources to be had, if we cooperate and we work synergistically to get to all these places at once, I think that uh, that's the best way to go. So my favorite space fact is that there is an exoplanet that is both completely solid ice but also on fire at the same time. So the pressure is so high that the water is solid, but it's so hot that it's also in flames. And that's pretty cool. My first memory of space was up on Mount Lemmon looking up at the sky and seeing shooting stars. Then I did a hike with astronomers over in the Saguaro National Monument and seeing all the shooting stars and they said, and that was a brightness of plus one or minus two. So <laughs> that's my first memory. First memory for me was May 5th, 1957, Mercury transit of, uh, on, on the sun. and. Um, a teacher had brought to my little two-room schoolhouse, had brought a, a telescope and projected an image of the sun on a screen, and I saw sunspots, and I never knew that kind of thing could exist. I think my first memory of space was, I was in elementary school, and there was some star party where they uh, was looking through telescopes, and it was, when I looked through the telescope and I saw Saturn's rings, it was the first time where I realized that, like, that thing actually existed in front of me, and I thought, that was really cool and so then I went home and got this book, this National Geographic book called Our Universe and 20 years later I'm still studying it so I think it's cool. When I was in kindergarten and got glasses for the first time my dad took me out in the backyard to show me what the sky looked like and I finally understood what stars were. Uh, being in kindergarten and learning about the planets and seeing all the pictures of the planets and seeing um, the really nice pictures like from Cassini of Saturn and we have the, um, the Voyager images and of Mars and we have all these great images and then you get to Pluto and it's, it was just like a blob, like an orange blob and it was all, you couldn't even make out what it was and so and I asked my 
parents, like, I was like, I want a better picture of Pluto. Like, I told them, I was like, I want you to give me a better picture of Pluto, because when you're in kindergarten, like, your parents give you whatever you want. And, um, and they said, well, that's the best image we have. Like, we don't have any better image of Pluto. And so when we got the images of Pluto back from New Horizons this past year, it was like the fulfillment of my childhood, <laughs> basically. Like, my five-year-old self was very happy that day. So. Actually, I grew up in the city, so I was more conscious of space at the Science and Industry Museum when we had a model of the, the you know, the solar system. It was there, and I thought, oh yes, you know, I was about seven. Wow, solar system. You didn't get to see a lot of sky in Chicago. It was often cloudy, lots of lights, you know. But I started thinking about it more after going to the Science and Industry Museum. The Milky Way, to me, is the most extreme. I mean, when you really see the, mo the Milky Way in a place like Maine, where there aren't a lot of lights, and you just look at it, you are, you are just so struck by the awe of what the universe is, and pla your place in it is just so infinitesimally small. And I think my first memory of space, I mean, you remember seeing the sky. Of course, everyone's actual first memory of space is probably seeing the sun, um, sunsets, things like that. But one of the things I really love um, is eclipses because, because it's the only time that you really get to see from the surface of a planet the fact that planets are moving in the sky. You know, we're on a rock that's hurtling through space and we're, you know, flying around the sun. And we don't, we know intellectually that that's true, but we have no way of really observing it easily except when an eclipse happens. So to get to see something like that sort of in real time in a very dynamic way to me is really fascinating. So the first time that I saw an eclipse uh, was, you know, really special to me. And I thought that it was, it was really cool and very inspiring. My first memory of space was probably when I was four years old and I was born in Tucson my father turned off the porch light and we took two steps up into the front yard and looked up and we saw Sputnik going from the north to the south. So that was my first memory of space. Um, but I do remember watching the Apollo moon landings and uh, I guess one of my, my best memory from that night is not just uh, watching the astronauts walk on the moon on a fuzzy black and white TV, but um, it was also, while we were waiting for them to climb out of the lunar module, uh, I remember going outside and looking up at the moon, which was almost a quarter phase. And it was my fir the first time I've ever actually looked at something up in the sky and realized that there were actually people up there. <laughs> and even today, when I see the space station fly over, I always wave at it. <laughs> and it's partly from that, you know, there are people up there on that little speck of light going by across the sky. My best earliest memory was the, the Perseids meteor shower. I was visiting my grandmother and read an astronomy <coughs> book that said there was a meteor shower August 12th, and so I decided that was the only day we could go out. It had to be after midnight, so she woke us all up and we walked to the park in our pajamas and saw the most incredible meteor shower I've ever seen. So that's why I study meteorites today. First few times I looked up to the sky and I really sat and thought, what is going on? What's going on, you know, with just these little points of light that I'm barely seeing? And I got this overwhelming kind of scary feeling that like, I don't know. These are things that I completely have no idea about, but um, that's what drove me to be in this sort of area of space sciences and, and astronomy and geology, you know, you know, just physically not knowing, just looking up and being intimidated uh, by the night sky. I think that was my first experience, <laughs> was just uh, uh, having these overwhelming thoughts of, you know, I had no idea what was going on. My first memory isn't really of space, but of space travel. Um, when I was in second grade, I remember the space shuttle being transported on the 747 to davis monthan uh, and then they took off again, kind of flying sort of over my school. So I remember the space shuttle flying by in second grade. Looking through a telescope and it was totally out of focus, so it was just this donut and something seems, it just was way off and I was like, oh, this telescope looks broken and like didn't make any sense, but then I just started tweaking the focus knob and, and then all of a sudden it just came down and it was Jupiter and just 
this incredible image of Jupiter and you could see the cloud cloud band. So that was Well, art defines the society in which it is created. And science is a part of the environment, the fringes of what we are thinking, and it is for art to interpret it so that people can understand. Art has always influenced like our con conception of space or how we think of space, how we're gonna plan for the future. And I mean, more so, it, it connects with the public all of our, the art and books, science fiction, and movies have heavily influenced how the public thinks of space and science, I think, like, the, the, I guess it's probably been brought up way too many times, but The Martian, obviously, people connect with that and think, wow, sp I thought space, like, wow, that's freaking sweet, I want to join NASA and be part of, like, Jet Propulsion Labs or something. Well, I think that the heavens have been the muse to artists in the fact that we have these wonderful, wonderful tales about uh, the Mediterranean constellations, and then also the fact that we have these wonderful, wonderful drawings of uh, those uh, mythological characters that um, people throughout the world have ascribed to our night skies and the constellations. You know, science is a fairly creative process. Uh, most people don't think of it that way because they remember E equals MC squared and F equals MA and all those difficult things you learned in school. Um, but to me you have to be sort of creative to recognize some of the interesting things that, that are out there to be learned. So uh, I think the creativity of art uh, blends with the creativity in science and uh, since I do a little bit of both um, it's fun to, to you know, look out at that speck of light in the sky and imagine what it really looks like. You know, if I could get up close and see the star that it is, or, or maybe, uh, you know, uh, if you're looking at Mars and Jupiter, now we can actually see close-up pictures of Mars and Jupiter. That sort of answers the, you know, in the old days, you know, before space, uh, we barely could see the, uh, the planets other than as specks of light. But now we see them as real places and we're starting to see other uh, things in the sky as real places that you could go and I just imagine all the different planets out there that you could go visit. I mean, coming up with something artistic and looking into like the void of space I feel can kind of be pretty similar because you don't know what you're going to see, you don't know what you're going to find. Art is part creation and part discovery within the self and space is discovery outside and so I think they go together in the same way of like exploration. It's just like whatever comes out is, is very different. <laughs> what she said. Well, I think it's really great that people who are either familiar with um, space and the science behind space that they can capture what they're seeing and what they're learning through art, because um, it helps those of us who either aren't gifted in art or in the science behind space to really appreciate what's out there and learn more. I think art, in the broadest sense, can enrich our drive into space, can actually help our drive into space. Uh, it was amazing to me that um, that Canadian astronaut, what was his name? Uh, Chris Hayfield? Yeah, Chris Hayfield. He got millions of hits. How did he get millions of hits? He played his guitar and sang a song in space. I mean that shows you the power of entertainment combined with space and I think that uh, those people who are looking uh, for resources to get into, into space should uh, it would behoove them to look to the entertainment field to arts in all its forms in order to um, galvanize and enrich the experience and um, facilitate the experience of getting into space. Uh, I believe that uh, technology is changing art like it's never done before. And uh, uh, most of our imagination, most of our images of what's in space, planets and so on and so forth, it's all conceptual art done by these IAA artists and is amazing. 
and it's amazing that people can conceive it. And it's even more amazing that when they finally go there, it actually looks like those conceptions. So space art is important, as is space. The art is an important aspect of space science and even exploration because, again, it enables us to see things that we don't see or we have a different perspective on it. So, therefore, it's important that art accompany or be involved in science is just as important as photography because it inspires us in terms of wanting to learn even more. I think that science can uncover things that that artists can explore and vice versa that we that you never, never would have known unless you use science to find out these things that artists can explore and then artists inspire us to do that exploration.